Hey everybody, welcome back to The Build Show. Steve Basic here. I'm back on location, Hilltop Arrow Project down here in Columbia, Missouri, and we got a treat for you because it's the first time I'm ever seeing it and it's the first time I've ever used it, so I'm here to share it with you. Insulation, but not just your average insulation, we're talking Havelock wool insulation, right? So a few months ago, this insulation was on the back of sheep somewhere in New Zealand, got sheared off, got cleaned up, got bagged, put it on a ship, brought over here, and Jake and his guys installed this here about a week or so ago. So we have, it's like I said, Havelock wool insulation. It's all natural insulation. It is hydrophobic, meaning that water doesn't challenge it in any way. It yields an R value of roughly around 4.3-ish. So in that five and a half inches, you know, we're in the 22-ish, 23-ish range. Um, and again, all natural, works very well. The other thing to mention about the uh, insulation here is we did a blown-in product. And the reason we did a blown-in product, if you remember when we talked about some of the framing, we talked about the use of the T-stud here. So the T-stud is basically a thermally broken stud or a solid stud that has the middle of it cut out with a little bit of truss members that migrate through it. But it has the ability to put insulation in there laterally. So this cavity actually communicates with this cavity. So by doing a blown in product, we not only get to fill the cavity, but we get that lateral movement through the T-stud and it helps to insulate that inch and a half opaque area on where the stud is. And then on the outside of the wall, of course, we have the zip R sheathing out there that's also helping as a thermal break, right? So, but in the corner here, if you remember, we have what I term the Missouri corner. We have our two studs, but we have insulation that fully encapsulates that corner. So there's not a cold corner out there. It's fully insulated with a Havelock wool um, they did a beautiful job. The last thing I'll mention is, you know, in my framing, I like to talk about header pockets and you guys have seen those in some of my framing videos, but here's a really good illustration, right? I know a lot of guys, framers, architects, they all sit there and they plan rigid insulation sandwiched between a couple LVLs, all of this good stuff. I just push my LVL header all the way to the outside. It provides me a pocket. And then what happens is, is the insulator insulates that pocket just like they insulate the normal cavity, right? Let's jump back to the studio. We'll pull out some details. We'll talk about this a little bit more in depth. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the studio. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little trip out there to the Hilltop Arrow Project. Uh, yeah, Jake and uh, the guys from Havelock Wool got some insulation going on there in... Uh, we added that to our Zip R9 and our T stud product in the wall, and our building assembly is uh, it's coming together. Anyways, broke out of detail here. I got some numbers to crunch with you. I got my certified number cruncher here, big red, and uh, let's dive in. All right, so broke out a little detail here. I'm just going to run through some of the numbers with you and do some number crunching with my good friend Big Red. So we have a wall section here you can see here is the stud frame. Notice we have a couple cords and these dowels that connect it. That is a T-stud or thermally broken stud. Now, a couple things about the T-stud. If you just did a regular 2x6 there, the R value for a 2x6 is probably somewhere around 6.8. And for those of you that want to nerd out, I'm using 1.25 per inch. So that's how I get that number. Um, that's for a pine board. But the beauty of the T-stud is that 
it's wood here and it's wood here but here there's an inch and three quarter inch space and so we can use blown in insulation if I looked at that in section the cross section of a tea stud looks like this All right and the dowel is there so when I put that in the wall there's a couple things that are happening there All right one well let's do this here let's extend that and so if we did a regular two by six so the regular two by six that's our 6.8 but this is broken and it's broken to the tune of one and three quarters of in inches so when i put the insulation and we use the blown in insulation for good reason well that blown in insulation can now fill that thermal break now there is a dowel here and the dowel is at an angle so there is a kind of an elliptical cross section i actually took the time to calculate that for you and that thermal bridge um, it comes out to about 2.5 percent of the area in that stud so that means that the T stud it's a thermally broken stud for roughly 97.5 percent 2.5 percent there's still that dowel connection so by putting that insulation in here and breaking that stud the 1.75 that means across we have two numbers we have the stud and that comes up to about 4.68 and the 1.75 comes up to about 7.5 so the Havelock wool we'll call it H wool it's roughly about 4.3 per inch up I get 12.1 so you moving to a T stud from a traditional stud I get almost 2x out of the deal right yeah maybe not quite 2x about 180 percent of uh, that but it's a vast improvement it's broken I'm getting the Havelock wool and we chose a blown in insulation because we were using the naked T stud that's the one that doesn't have foam already sprayed in there so we have 12.1 at the stud now if we measure across the cavity here the open cavity we get the 4.3 times 5.5 and that comes out to roughly our 24 all right so summarize regular stud our 6.8 T stud with Havelock wool blown in the wall 12.1 cavity at Havelock wool R24 now when we talk about walls and people say oh well I build an R21 wall or I build an R25 wall or R24 wall what they're usually talking about is the cavity insulation value or this R24 but the reality is, is if we put this house together, there's three numbers that play a role. There's the cavity number. There's what I call the opaque number. And the opaque number is where we have framing. So it's either at the T stud or solid stud. And then, of course, we have windows and doors. Now, in a typical house that we do, um, with Jake in this case, where we do our two by six studs to them 24 inches on center, the cavity is going to account for something like about 68%. The 
The opaque area is going to account for about 12%, and the windows and doors, well, they make up about 20%. And again, you can see here, 68%, that's R24. 12% is R12. And the windows, well, they're right around R7-ish. Go back and look at some of the videos. Uh, I just did a couple here recently where we talk about windows and R value based on uh, different parts of the window and different types of windows, operation, size of windows, all of that stuff. But, but these are pretty solid numbers. I've actually counted and did virtual framing on dozens of houses years ago. And uh, this is pretty much what we uh, had come up with, with a advanced framed house that 24 inches on center plus or minus. Now this number here is going to vary a little. These numbers vary a little, but this gets you in the ballpark. Now, one of the other things to realize on this house is we went a step further and added R9 out here. All right? And we did that with zip R sheathing. And that is R9. So when I look at these numbers and say R24, 12, and 7, well, the 7 I really can't change. I can just buy the best windows or doors that have the value that I can get, and I live with that. But the R24 cavity area, well, that also gets that R9 out here. So I can add that to that 24. And my cavity is actually 33. Now, the opaque area where the stud is, and at 12, well, I get that value of the 9 there. So I get 21 there. So you can see, by using the T stud and the zip R9, the value across the opaque line, where it would normally be R6.8, I'm at R21, which is the code requirement for the cavity line, right, which we have at R33 here. So by boosting those numbers and getting the better window, we boost our overall what we call whole wall R value. And the whole wall R value is when we take the 33, the 21, and the 7 and normalize them across these percentages. Um, 33, 21, 7. If I had to guess, we're probably somewhere in the R19-ish range. Maybe 20 for whole wall R value. So, last thing. At the end of the video, we talked about header pockets. Just wanted to point it out. I added that here. You can see here, for a lot of the smaller windows, we just run with a single LVL. It gets tucked up tight to the bottom of our double top plate, and then we put a head plate in. Now, like I said in the video, this creates this pocket. Now, the beauty of that is that this insulation at the pocket can get insulated exactly the same time we're doing the cavity here because it is the cavity. So, like I always say, the framers get to do what the framers do when the framers want to do it, and the insulator gets to do what the insulator wants to do when the insulator wants to do it. So everybody's pretty happy. We don't pull them out of sequence. We get to use the same material. They net over that and they blow it. It's just a shallower pocket because one and three quarters is used up by the LVL. But we still get that, I don't know, when we lose an inch and a, or one and three quarters. So what's that? It's probably three and three quarters. Is that right? Three, one half, yeah, three and three quarters. So at three and three quarters times four, you know, that pocket is worth roughly R16. And don't forget, we have the R9 on the outside. So even at our headers, we're running R25. So that's everything 
you need to know about our value out at the Hilltop Arrow Project. So, there you have it. Big Red going to bed. All right, number crunching finished. And uh, yeah, that's near the end of this video. But if you want more, find me on Steve Basic Architect on Instagram, putting up stuff daily. You can find uh, my daughter who works with me, Alexandra Basic, on Instagram also. Uh, you can find me teaming up with my great buddies Peter Yost and Jake Bruton on the Unbuild It podcast where we talk a lot about this stuff and uh, we have a little bit of behind the scenes antics there too. So you can find us there on all those uh, typical podcast outlet uh, audio channels and on YouTube. So Unbuild It podcast. And then last but not least, you got to check out the Build Show Network. We got literally hundreds of videos out there on all kinds of great topics. My good friends Matt, Wade, Brent, Jake, Detmore, Drywall Shorty, Mechanical Hub, Design Build Doug. We are putting up videos weekly in troves. So go check them out. Science says you got to watch them seven times to truly grasp all the information. So anyways... But make sure you watch mine before you can tell theirs. Um, anyways, go check out all those videos. Great stuff. Great stuff. And uh, until next time, long live our buildings.